Hey, at home, when I'm sitting on the couch with my iPad, I use this new thing called Next Guide to find the TV I want to watch because it's hard to use Comcast Guide sometimes to figure out what's on and what, what I might care about, particularly because it might be on something that's not on my cable box, right? And uh, today we're going to see a new thing from Next Guide and find out what the next stage of uh, their business is. <laughs> Who are you? Hey Robert, I'm Jeremy Toman, CEO of Digit Media. And since we've chatted a couple times before, but a little refresher, um, I've been in the TV and gadget tech space for most of my career. Companies like Mediabolic, which is now part of Rovi, Sling Media, makers of the Sling Box, which got bought by Dish. I also spend a bunch of time consulting with companies like Bug Labs, um, Boxy, Clicker, which is now part of CBS, Voodoo, now part of Walmart, and a bunch of other cool folks along the way. And now we're here trying to make TV a little bit better for everybody out there. So there's, uh, you know, there's a bunch of ways to find out what's on, what's on TV and what is on TV. It's not like the old days when I grew up when I had three channels to watch or four channels and uh, we got a TV guide in Sunday's paper, right? Right. Today we have, uh, my Comcast box has hundreds of channels and then online we have all sorts of channels that, or Websites. I don't even know what to call them. Hulu and uh, Netflix and on and on and right. on. Lots of things to put on my big screen TV, which I would call TV, but don't look like the TV I grew up Doesn't, with. No, it's not, it's not your dad's TV anymore. It's, you know, so ultimate, ultimate so you built this thing called Next Guide yeah. that helps me find out what... Well, tell me what Next Guide is. Sure. So we came to the same conclusion you were just saying, is that people don't just watch TV anymore. Um, you know, 92% of Netflix subscribers also have a cable feed. And what we were realizing is, or, or satellite or things like that, it's, it's become too much work to know where things are. You know, we are in what we'll call the infinite channel lineup. You have your 500 channels. You also probably have about 6,000 or so titles of streaming on demand, I'm sorry, on demand content from Comcast. Then you have Netflix, Hulu, iTunes, Amazon, HBO Go, and, and dot, dot, dot. And if you just want to watch something because, you know, your, your pal Rocky said, hey, dude, you've got to watch... Uh, Mad Men, yeah. but you've never heard of this Mad Men show before because you live in some fictitious world. But uh, you know, where are you going to watch it? Where's episode one? Right, season one, episode one of Mad Men. Where can you catch up on it? Well, I don't know. And so I'm going to go to Netflix and search, and I'll go to Hulu and search, and I'll go to Amazon and search, and I'll probably give up and end up watching an infomercial instead. Right? I mean, it's just it's a pain. So we built Next Guide as an iPad app designed to help you with exactly that. The other thing that that app does is recommend stuff for you. So it knows that Rocky likes the sharks and it's going to find them like the sharks extra interviews and things like that. Whereas it knows I like poker and it's going to find me the World Series of Poker Tour. And it's designed to really um, personalize itself around your life, your interests, and what you like in TV. Yeah. Now what we're adding, and that's what we'll show today, is a web version of Next Guide. Because one of the things we've learned from our friends in the TV industry is apps are great. People love apps, but the one thing you're definitely going to have in front of you at all times is a web browser. And there's a lot of people across this country and others that when they're watching TV, they've got a laptop or even a desktop somewhere in their room, and they don't always have something to pull out at the last minute and uh, download something and just, just find out more about a TV show. Yeah. So we're launching, we're launching good old web. It's, uh, it's almost like the 90s again. Now, even in my house, I have an iPad on, on my couch. Uh, but my wife is sitting on a, on a laptop, doing usually doing Facebook or something, and then we have the TV going, and yep. we're always like, hey, what should we watch now? And somebody wins, usually the kids. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> usually the kids. So we're building the site. Now, the other thing we're doing is we're really tailoring the website for kind of, again, anyone with a browser. Yeah. Does two things really, really well. One, universal search. You want to know where Mad Men or Homeland or Touch or any of your favorite shows are, Search by name, find it, we'll tell you everywhere it is. Here's the next episode on live, here's the next episode on streaming, all in one search. And that alone, we're getting so much feedback on that, that people just want that. Yeah. The second thing we've got, which... Yeah, even on Breaking Bad, when I, I watched all five seasons in 17 days, I'm a little crazy that way. <laughs> but, but it was because all my friends were like on Twitter and Facebook were yep. saying, Breaking Bad is the coolest thing I've ever seen and I, you gotta watch it, right? And so I finally gave in and got hooked up within the first two episodes and I just said, oh, I'm staying up and watching this because sure. it's cool. 
the the problem is you could find I think three or four seasons on one service. Then the right. fifth season was on something else, and I had to figure out where to find the fifth season. And now we're waiting for season six, right? That's right. I think it's season six. Which is which is a lead into our second big new feature. Um, so. I can tell you because I pay attention to these things when when the next season of Breaking Bad starts. Most people have no idea. It's right? the summer time. Summer, summer, right? That's what most people are, sometime this summer. Um, you know, Dexter, sometime this summer. Well, the dates are set. What we've built is a universal watch list or a universal queue. Think of it however you like. You go to our site now, go to, go to Next Guy TV, find, Bad, find Breaking Bad, and you push a little clock icon, set a reminder. We'll email you. Can we yeah, see we're gonna it go to, Yeah, we're going to go Let's to do right that. I, I, show me Breaking Bad because I All love right. Breaking Bad. So um, I just this is the site for someone who's new to it, never used it before, showing very clearly the three things, you know, never miss a show, find anything anywhere, and also share your favorites. There's a big social component here. Yeah. I'm going to log into my profile. Um, so... Maybe we can see all of my likes, just because it is uh, one of those experiences that's that really is designed around social. So let's let's go to my profile here, and I'll show you. For example, this is my watch list. These are things I've queued up. I plan to watch. I've never seen it. Maybe a buddy of mine said it was good. Maybe I read a review, but I just haven't had the time to watch it. Yeah. Let's um, look for Breaking Bad. All right, Breaking Bad it is. I, I want it. Uh, it was that, in, that's, in, uh, I need to know that. It's, <laughs> it's in my watch list. So. Um, First, we search for Breaking Bad, find the show, and right here you can see this little blue icon means it's in my private watch list, so I plan to watch this at some time. Cool. But I can hit right here, this little reminder icon, and I'm done. Whenever new episodes come to a new streaming service, so you just mentioned seasons one through four are probably all on Amazon, season, or on Netflix. Yeah. Season five is probably only on Amazon and iTunes right now. Well, guess what? Whenever season five shows up on Netflix, I'll get an email. When season six shows up on DirecTV, I'll get an email within six days of the airing so that I can do what's the next most important thing, which you can see this little button right here. I can queue a recording on my DVR all from this interface. Oh, very cool. At launch, we're supporting DirecTV and Comcast, which are the two biggest service now providers. Now, I just got a new Comcast X1 box, which work. is really nice, by the way. It's way sharper than uh, your old X. If you can get one, go get one, because yeah. it's a much better box than they, the old one. They've definitely Much faster it. and much easier to search for and, and more, more media too. Right. So, but can you show me the day that actually the Breaking Bad's gonna come up? Because I want to plan a Breaking Bad party. Uh, <laughs> we don't have that. Rocky and I have to have a viewing party. Right? Yeah, we, come on, have... we need to see what happens <laughs> on Walt. We'll, we'll be adding that when we're between seasons like we are now. It's actually a All feature right. we have now where we'll actually say season premiere colon and whatever the date is. So yeah. for now, you're just going to have to set a reminder and we'll find out. All right. <laughs> now, you know, speaking of Rocky, what, what astute viewers might be noticing is Rocky's slick looking profile over here. Well, I'm going to tap on Rocky's face because yeah. we love him so much. And now Rocky has never used Next Guy before. I'm like, a, I'm like a magician here. Right, Rocky? Never used it before? Yeah. Right, but here we go. Here's Rocky's profile. But you got his favorite show, Sons of Anarchy, right shows. on the homepage. Well, it turns out Rocky has 58 likes on Facebook that have to do with television or movies. And so we've pulled in his whole social feed so that I can browse around. If I want to know a good thing to watch and I think Rocky's got good taste, I can browse through all this Rocky stuff. Rocky does not have good taste, but it, you know, it, it is entertaining. There, there's some good stuff here. Uh, 20, <laughs> 2012, man, I can't justify that one. Uh, but The Wire, great show, one of my favorites uh, too. You can see my wife says that's the best show on TV. Best show on television, for yeah. sure. And um, what's cool is, you know, it's, it's just a, like, think about using Facebook, where we don't go to our friends' <laughs> likes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sylvester <laughs> Stallone. <laughs> we don't go to our friends' <laughs> likes on Facebook and look at the TV shows. It's just not how we use Facebook. It's yeah. not organic. But here it is done in a, in a seamless fashion. And so that I can come in and say, oh, man, you know, Rocky thinks this show's pretty good. I can tap to read more about it. Never watched it before. See which other of my friends like it. And say, okay, well, if Rocky likes it, I'll add it to my watch list too. And uh, find out how many episodes there are. Okay, there's only two seasons. Not yeah. too bad. Um, and make a decision on it. I can That's keep cool. going down through here. I can say, who are other fans of this show? Now you again see it starts with my friend Rocky. Here's what else is cool about what we're doing with Facebook. People who aren't Rocky's Facebook friends won't see him. So I'm seeing him because we're, we have that relationship and through the Facebook open graph that's preserved, but we're not exposing his profile to other people. So we keep the relationships you have on Facebook intact with the next guide. A lot of other kind of social things kind of download your stuff and spray them out to the wild. Um, 
I guess that's the difference of when you have a, when I'm, I'm, I'm old, I'm 40 now, Robert, so I don't like to show, I, I like to Hey, I'm privacy. 48. <laughs> yeah, well. You're young still. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's the first set of what we've done. And, yeah. and um, No, that's nice so that you keep the friend relationships and that, that also keeps it relevant because our friends that we hang out with are, are the people we're going to talk about, you know, TV with. And Bingo. if they're all watching Breaking Bad, I want to know that. If they're all watching, you know, ice skating, I want to know that too. And we can also do things. So now here's me browsing my Facebook friends all in one beautiful wall, right? I don't have to go friend by friend. Yeah. I can just go through here and looking for something that, that I haven't seen that looks kind of good. Um, I've seen a lot of these things, but you know, there's, there's everybody in my real social graph is showing up here. Yeah. Um, whatever their titles might be, it's yeah, kind I of see neat Dave little. McClure there, and you know, we can go see. Let's see what Dave likes on TV. Yeah. And again, we've pulled in his Facebook profile. Now I'll show you a difference. So five days ago, Dave liked uh, like Spirited Away, great movie, right? So we we're really dealing with a real time. Uh, and I know he has here. young kids, so I bet he has some kids <laughs> stuff there. And now one other thing you can do is in the system you can actually follow people proactively. So other next guide users who are off creating profiles and favoriting things. Here's me, you know, I saw someone join the site yesterday who's into BSG and Arrested Development and Blade Runner. I'm like, that's gotta be someone cool. Yeah. So I just followed her profile. Um, you know. This is a question I, I yeah. have about finding things. A, a lot of times uh, we're gonna have our kids with us and they're right. young kids. And so watching Breaking Bad in front of the kids is sort of, <laughs> Not really. Not a good fit, Robert. You know, not I'm not going to criticize your parenting, but you not, wanna, you not really recommend because out. there's lots of blood and gore and, and drug use and some sex in there, right? And, and, and the kids don't enjoy it anyways. They they just don't like that kind of thing. They they like Thomas the Tank Engine usually. <laughs> Is there, a way, is there a way to switch the mode and say, show me only kid stuff? We can or certainly do that. We, we haven't built it yet, but okay. we can have, you know, our idea is this, is that if you're anything like me, my Netflix profile is just a big clutter now, right? Yeah. So is my Comcast. So like everything's just a big hodgepodge. And it's worse because the kids have Netflix, my Netflix on their iPad. Right. So they polluted my Netflix. And so, so we I'm, getting, let you... I'm getting lots of Thomas the Tank Engine yeah. recommendations. I reckon, <laughs> by the way, my, my current kids show is Sean the Sheep. Like yeah. it's by the Wallace and Gromit guys. It's awesome. My, my kids like it. It's I don't watch much TV with the kids. Like we, we we try to keep them away from it. But that's the one show that we all actually watch together. It's, it's, a, it's see a that's pick. that's where I'm going. Is at 7 p.m. I want to and the kids are in charge of the TV. You're I want to see your recommendations. That's right. The kids' recommendations on your Facebook page or on your next. Well, right guy, now, right? right now we. Keep and then at 10 p.m., I yeah. want to switch to Rocky and you to see adult viewing, Breaking Bad and CSI uh, and whatnot. Right? I think it's a great idea. We certainly have the data for it. I mean, our goal here is to be a data machine, and actually, I'd like to to be smart enough to know that when you're browsing the site at seven o'clock, you tend to tap on kids stuff and just give you more kids stuff. And when you're browsing the site at 10 o'clock. You know, start learning your behaviors and learn that on a Tuesday you tend to look at comedies, on a Thursday you look at dramas, and on when you're on your iPad you tend to look for 22-minute shows, and when you're on your browser you look for hour-long. But remember, stuff. my kids all have their own iPads, so a but lot they of all times have different I'm, profiles. I'm trying to help them find something appropriate to watch on their iPad, and I'll be watching an adult show on my iPad, right? Well, we don't want you. So in our vision, your kids could have their own accounts. Right, because we don't have a Facebook requirement. You can stay hidden, so you don't have to use any of the social stuff. So you can just create an account for your kids and just bookmark all the stuff because then, ah, that's cool. you know, and part of the point of it is this. So these are my favorites here, for example. So let's go to Parks and Rec. There's one click links to all the stuff, right? So as I said before, here's the link to notify me when it's on TV. But if I want to go off to the pilot and see where to watch it, you know, I'm one click away from pulling up on Netflix. And there we go. Awesome. Right. So, um, you know, we could easily turn this whole thing into a kids-friendly mode. I mean, Netflix yeah. has a great kids mode. Hulu does, does as well, and we have the data for it. Um, you got to put one foot in front of the other. No, it, it, but it does demonstrate how TV is changing in, in homes because, you know, when I grew up, I didn't have an iPad. <laughs> and sure. We had I mean, one TV, and my dad had control of the remote, so we had to convince my dad, "Hey, can we can we watch Bionic Man or something like that?" Well, right? you, I mean, <laughs> you, you know, you're a few years older than me. You remember no remotes. I remember getting up and turning the UHF yeah, yeah, button. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but um, we were in Silicon Valley. We were a little bit more advanced than that. <laughs> trying to try to show off the uh, <laughs> the thing that we also have been looking at is. There's a lot of noise around the future of TV. Yeah. A lot of people talking a lot of stuff. 
And we've come to kind of a simple conclusion. Here's what I can say, point of fact. Future TV has more streaming and more on-demand consumption than it does today. It will also have live viewing. It will have bundles. It will have many of the models that are true today. And you know what? There's a lot of value in live TV. Yeah. Most people in this country watch more live TV than anything else by a wide margin. Yeah. Even in DVR households. I watched American Idol last night, right? Why, why did I do that? I don't know. Well, okay. I like I'm American Idol. Uh, I, no, but you have to watch it live, otherwise everybody spoils it for you, right? That's right. On Twitter, they're all going, oh, you know, XYZ1. And it's like, ah, oh, shut up, man. I didn't want to know that. That's right. Because I wanted to DVR it. Actually, I found a little trick. If you start like a two hour show, if you start it 40 minutes late, by the time the show ends, which right is where the uh, big reveal is, yep. you're up with everybody on Twitter, right? Because you know there's 20 minutes of commercials an hour. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I just finished watching The Wire, and I had to avoid everything. I couldn't go to IMDb. I couldn't go to I like. I stayed away from half the internet while watching the show yeah. because it was it's such a grip. You really got to watch it, man. Um, I, I watched all The Wire. I, I'm, I love. Oh, you have watched. I've oh, watched okay. everything. Right. Man, come on. Uh, so Homeland. I guess have our watch Homeland. I haven't. It's it's on my it's in my watch list. Dude, I've heard it's good. Have you watched uh, House September of Cards? 20, by the way, September 29th for Homeland. Ha just so you know. Have you watched House of Cards? I have. Um, episode seven or eight, so we okay. won't talk about that one. Okay. It's but good. House of Cards is another example of how TV is changing. That's yep. a a show that was made just for Netflix. So it's not on cable. Nope. It's not on ABC. It's not. But on you know, it could HBO. get there one day. It so could. they've already. So the DVD rights are actually not exclusive to Netflix which is interesting. And once the DVD rights come out, all sorts of windowing and rules change. So it wouldn't shock me to see House of Cards come to, a, to a, a network. I'm sure, I mean, look, there's a lot of networks that would love a show like that. And you could easily see it on a, on a USA, on an FX, on a, I mean, even a, even a major network would be happy to carry a show like that, right? Yeah. High quality. Um, so it's, you know, I, I guess what, what the way we sit is we are watching how people are changing the behaviors you're talking about and trying to keep up with that. Trying to give a service that's valuable today in today's world. You wouldn't have needed a site like this 10 years ago, right? There, everything was still kind of in one place. How do you guys make money with this? Because I, I don't see a lot of ads. I don't see... Is that, a, isn't it, do we have to do that? I don't know. You know how we do you probably should. Um, it, it might be nice to get paid. We, we might get paid. No, we, uh, <laughs> we'll turn on we'll turn on revenue next year. I know you have a wife and kids. They like they uh, like to eat. And they, have um, nice you know, I just so. feed them in uh, I feed them in free chat applications and things like that. <laughs> um, we uh, we'll be turning on revenue next year. So you know me. I've been in this space for a while. You can't make money in TV until you have a massive audience. Yeah. So even though our user base is already in the millions and things are going great for us, it's not enough. Right? It's not enough to get the dollars that matter. And I'm not going to say what's the point in taking the checks today because we'll probably take some checks today um, because the, the data we have is already easily monetizable. Yeah. But we want to come in where we can move the needle. I want to be able to go to a network and say, because of our servers, because of our reminders, because of our platform and our social and our sharing and all these things, I can show a 1% uplift in yeah. live TV consumption because that is when they come back to the table and want to pay attention to you. Yeah. When I'm sure we could do some interesting things now. We have a lot of brands that want to want to work with our data and basically license the data and do advertising. That's that's the model here. Um, but we're holding off for right now. I, I think we're not in a crunch mode to do it. And I think we still have a lot more to learn before we start that. Yeah. Because once the user base is what we want it to be, and once once we have the, I mean, we have more data on TV than than you know most companies, right? I mean, us and about. Five other players probably have more data points on TV taste and preference and intent to watch patterns and all this than virtually any company out there. Um, yeah. But when we can make those numbers, you know, a 10x, then you know, a lot of doors open. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the competitive space here because I, sure. I, I know when you go to iTunes Store or the Apple Store and search for TV Guide stuff, there's a, there's a whole bunch of choices. There's there. a lot of choices. I think it's there's why TV we've guide all, there's there's TV Guide themselves. There's a bunch of little startups. There's some big companies. Direct TV has their own app. Comcast has their own app. For the most part, a lot of them are pretty good too. And this is part of why we started building the web platform. Is even as we were bringing the Next Guide app out to market. We always knew we couldn't be an app company. I mean, for every Flipboard and Mailbox, you can name literally hundreds of thousands of app companies that make beautiful things but never go get out of the stratosphere. Yeah. So we needed. We we always knew we needed a web platform. Um, by being able to push notifications to a user by email, SMS, Facebook, iOS, Android, and uh, and eventually Twitter, 
we have a lot of different ways of interacting with someone that makes it so that you don't have to think what of our technologies you're using. You might just use this to get reminders about Breaking Bad, and you don't have to go spend a lot of time on the website. I'm yeah. fine with that, right? Um, so competitive-wise, if, if we were just a TV guide, we'd be, you know, it's a hard space to be in. And best app doesn't necessarily win, right? I love my app, and I'm proud of what we built, and we get four and a half stars in the App Store. But that's not, that's not a business, that's an app, yeah. right? Um, now we're teaming up with content, pub content publishers, networks, broadcasters, pay TV providers to integrate our one-click-to-DVR recording, integrate, integrate our re reminder technology and platform, um, and that's really working well. So what you'll start seeing is, let's go to the show, so Touch, for example, is the current show. Yep. I like Touch because um, I, I have an autistic kid and yeah, the kid there is autistic. So. So there you go. Yeah. But I don't see you as a fan. You're going to have to fan the show, Robert. Uh, you know, so I know. I, that <laughs> we're going to be taking the Remind Me to Watch functionality yeah. and working with third parties who are interested in the same functionality on their own websites. So it becomes really a distribution play for us. And that's where I think the company gets really fun and exciting. Right, cool. A lot, a lot to going on in TV space. It's going to be interesting well, to see uh, as it shifts. And there's still an Apple rumor that Apple's getting in the, into uh, the new TV space in a, a bigger way than it already is. So. I, I would assume Apple's going to get into the TV space in a much bigger way than they are. I just don't think it's the way everybody else. I, I don't think it's by necessarily a big flat device that people call a television. Yeah. I think there's a lot of other ways to be in TV. And I mean, you know, it's funny, like, People seem to be, you know, kicking Apple right now. I, I, I is the w worst mistake you can see companies make. I think, uh, or people make. I think Apple's, um, first of all, got a lot of tricks left up, left up their sleeves, and they their have brand loyalty. Forty billion dollars in the bank. Yeah. Well, and their brand loyalty. People still yeah. love their products. Maybe yeah. in Silicon Valley, we think they're passe. No, no way. No I, way. I have ten grand worth of their stuff in front of me. <laughs> even, no. even as I see that they're losing their innovation curve, uh, and they sort of admitted it. They said we're not a growth company anymore. We're going to be a, a more standard company, but they still they still have a lot yeah. to come out. So, um, but uh, you know, it, it's a fun space to be in. TV, it's I mean, it's changing every couple of months. Like today, we have relationships with companies. Like if I were to tell you two years ago. One of the last times we sat down that I was going to go work with an API from a company like DirecTV or Comcast, it would have been a laughing joke. It would have been a joke. Yeah. Right? Because what it used to be is you do a partnership and you do a trial run like in Albany for three years and, and never get out, never actually get implemented. That was the old joke of working with cable companies. Yeah. And today, they have APIs. We actually are beta yeah. testing APIs for pay TV companies with tens of millions of subscribers. Comcast back end now is built on OpenStack, which yeah. we invented and gifted to the world as open source but their uh, their new x1 box is magic. it's cool it's yeah. very cool it's a it's a different world than it was two years ago it absolutely right? is because those big guys are like oh we better react otherwise the cord cutting trend which is you know go completely online and not have a cable box is really starting to affect them and uh that was not true two years ago either. It was yeah, only the weirdos. Not, it was only the weirdos cord, who were cord cutting. I'm know? not a believer in that in that one yet, just because of you know when someone like you, who I mean, look, you got Google Glass, you are at the top of the innovation cycle, and you watched American Idol live. That right there is yeah, the, maybe. you know, I mean that that's the example, right? Yeah. You, just, you know, on a dollar per hour basis, your cable bundle is so good a deal. Like people people like to rank on the cable companies. There's no reason to. If you watch as much TV as the average American household does, you're getting your TV for about a quarter an hour, right? Just do that math compared to, you know, I went to see Iron Man 3 last night for like $13, Yeah. right? Per uh, person. Yeah. So um, if you have five people sitting around on a couch watching TV, it it's worth cheaper. it. And that's why, and, and yeah. you know, and that's why, and I, you know, coming back to where we are, I'm trying to do simple things for people that they like. Everybody's missed a show they wanted to watch. Right? What would happen if you're, you're you travel a lot? You miss the season premiere of Breaking Bad, right? Yeah. You're, ah, what happened? But we're going to help people not do that, right? Help people watch the shows they want to watch. Um, give them a nice little social tool. One click to your DVR. One click to your streaming services. You know, it's not necessarily the uh, a space shuttle or anything. Well, lastly, tell me about your company you're building. How is it funded, and how many people are involved? Sure, we're a small team. We're we're eight about to become nine people. We're based here in San Francisco. We are. We took a seed round last year. We'll probably do another round later this year. Uh, and um, it's it's going great. I'm, my co-founder, who couldn't be here today, is, 
he and I, his name's Adam Berg, and he and I have worked together for about 14 years now in virtually every startup uh, together. So cool. it's something fun about working with a great team and people you love to work with, as, as you well know. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, Rocky doesn't like to work with me. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we find it? Nextguide.tv. Very cool. Nextguide.tv. Uh, all right. Thanks so much for coming out and thanks, showing Robert. me the new website, and yeah. I'll be playing with it. Don't forget to set your alert for Breaking Bad. <laughs>